Welcome to Unmuted. We got your game any sports hot topic, hot sweet, and the spiciest memes. I'm Lisa Dwan. And I'm Sylvester Stallone. Oh, you wish. We're going to present, no, <laughs> definitely not, uh, all the goodies that we've gathered, which we will discuss and most likely argue. But lucky for all of us, we've got a mute button right here, which either one of us can press just once to mute the other for a full 30 seconds. That's right, just one time. Remember, we like it when you call us out when we're wrong and praise us when we're spitting truth. So let's get right to it. For our first story, we're going to take a look at what may be an end to the latest Dota 2 controversy. OG published a statement yesterday saying that one of its players, Seth, will be donating all of his earnings from the upcoming Epicenter Major and one month's salary to charity. Why forfeit the money? Well, Seth made discriminatory comments against Russians in a game last month which prompted Virtus Pro Solo to call on Valve and OG to punish Seb for clear rule violations. OG will also work with VP to try and propose something that will improve the Dota environment as a whole. Okay, AJ, do you think this punishment is enough for the crime that he committed? Uh, I mean, I think it's a good start. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not exactly sure what his terrible comments were. Uh, yeah, I remember he said stuff like... Um, uh, a Russian, this is his words by the way, a Russian would sell their mother for like points in the game, like experience in the game. Okay. Um, it's just like bad stereotypes and obviously yeah. as a pro you shouldn't be saying stuff like that against Definitely. a race too, you know, or a, yeah. Yeah, or a country, an ethnic, background. ethnic yeah. identity or anything along yeah. those lines. Yeah, I mean it seems like it, it fits the crime I, I suppose, but yeah, it should be really more about like making amends mm -hmm. and trying to do things to better the community exactly. for sure, set better examples. This is actually something I've been thinking about doing a lot myself like trying to Same create comments no no oh. trying to create a, a I mean it's not a charity but an organization that would be about bettering the and counteracting the toxicity that is so prevalent within gaming so I think it's an important do? thing I don't community. know that's what I've been trying oh. to figure out lately you know how do you how do <laughs> so you it's very preliminary things? planning preliminary <laughs> thoughts of like there should be a thing but it's not quite a charity because what do you do with the money you know like, it's mm. more about like gathering people together and raising awareness for the issue of toxicity within the gaming community and figuring out a way that we can work to eliminate I actually really like this idea because it's uh, more about, you know, we don't want to just punish someone and like push them to the side and forget about them, right? This is kind of more yeah. making a statement like, listen, this player messed up, let's teach him the right way and yeah. Let him keep playing, but have him spread his message now, so other players too can learn from this experience, right? Is so like that's just as an opportunity the best. to teach and exactly. to learn, and hopefully the charity is a Russian-based charity. Uh, that's a good point. You didn't mention. <laughs> I'm sure there are charities in Russia. All right, shall we move on? Yeah, I think we should move on. Sometimes us casters miss details and make mistakes. We don't like to bring ours up. So let's <laughs> talk about two other folks, uh, two CS:GO casters. They missed an entire round. It happened at uh, Moche. XL over the weekend when Kieran Cullinan and Ted Seard missed an entire round of Furia versus Gamer Legion. The duo was so caught up in analyzing the previous round and the production crew was so focused on the crowd that by the time they noticed the game was back on, the round was nearly over. So Lisa, what do you think of this mistake? Is this going to ruin their careers or maybe boost it because now they've done something that's worth talking about? I mean, that's fair. There's no such thing as bad publicity, right? right. Uh, but I don't think this is his fault at, or their fault at all. Like, they were busy doing their job casting and this is more yeah. on the production side where they messed up uh, behind, like, they need to be on track of this. I don't know if they need a producer or something because, well, you know, the, we know some producers. This here. is what I was about <laughs> to say. I mean, the term for What's the people on? at the desk in the business is talent, but Quite honestly, it's a misnomer. We we don't have much of that. We have the people in our ears who help us. They communicate Whoa, to us that's covertly. That's television secret. We're oh, not no. To, oh, no. Spitting some truth. Oh, no. F's in the chat. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we don't just focus all ourselves, guys, somehow. This is it. Um, but yeah, it should team. be the people in the ear say, like, hey, game's on. Shut up. Stop talking yeah. about the old one. <laughs> Tell us what's happening on the screen right now. Exactly. So it seems like everyone was uh, asleep at the wheel there, and they just, you know, bear the brunt of it because they're the people who are on camera. Yeah, which yeah. is unfortunate for them because this is really not their fault. But exactly. this kind of brings to attention, like, esports tournaments, are they still kind of lacking in production? Like, what's going on? CSGO has been established for a long time now, but yeah. maybe this is, like, I think it was was an event, correct me if I'm wrong, in Portugal, so maybe the scene isn't as developed, but that just brings light that we need more production. We need more people in esports that aren't just players and teams. We need production people. But you know what? Mistakes happen all over the place. Yes. You know, you can go to any professional studio in any country and there will be moments where they cut to the wrong thing yeah. for a moment. Uh, you know, one of my friends is an editor on a big yeah. national morning show and he told me, like, we ran the wrong B-roll and what ended up on, on TV was 
Very, very wrong. Uh, <laughs> so these things can happen. And, you know, it's not just relegated to esports, yeah. and I, I don't think they should worry too much about AJ, it. You, you like to pretend you're perfect, but have you ever made a big boo boo on a uh, set? Uh, I mean, all kinds of them. Fortunately, they were not live. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right, let's move on. Uh, in League of Legends news, a new report states that the LCK will only get two seeds in the group stage at the 2019 World Championship. The third team will have to fight its way through the play-in stage, which a Korean team has never done before. The LCK has traditionally had three seeds in the group stage thanks to its dominance in the game, but recent results have caused China, Europe, and North America to push Korean teams out of the spotlight. AJ, do you think this is a good change? This is kind of big for esports. Like Korea has always been the top dog, especially yeah, in league. Of course. So this is kind of a big deal. I don't think anyone could argue that it is not a good thing. I mean, Koreans probably. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah, they're probably not happy about this. But you know, wh why not make it more difficult if that's the way that the league is shaking out right now? Mm -hmm. Give uh, more opportunity to the teams that deserve it, who have been competing at high standard, make this more competitive. That's what we ultimately want to see. The yeah. best teams rise to the top no matter which region they are from, obviously having a fair entry for each region. Um, so I'm, I'm happy about this. I don't, I don't see why you could be. I agree. I'm super unhappy. happy about this because Korea has been dominant for so many years, but the last like couple of years, they've been much weaker in league. So yeah. this is really going to set that fire under their butt. Mm. And hopefully, you know, we're going to see uh, hopefully more talent come out of Korea, new talent, and have them fight and get their way to the top. Like before, they were kind of almost entitled in a sense. They were given this. Well, but now we want the new rookies to actually fight for it. Talk about Griffin, by the way. You're right, right. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, that, that's the way it was, and that's the way it is now. And these things could change. We could see in another few years of going back to them having their, their three guaranteed spots. Yeah, you never know. True. It's depending upon how things are playing out otherwise. I'm waiting so. for the day where, you know, North America gets the three spots automatically because North America doesn't have a really good track record in esports. Yeah, you might be waiting a long time. Wow! Where's the faith, AJ? What? I'm just saying. Wait, do you have a favorite esports team? I'm curious. I don't think I've ever asked you that before. A favorite esports yeah. team? Where's your allegiance? Toronto Which Defiant. Watch oh esports in 30 God. later. And how they're doing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right, for our last story, Dignitas has a brand new sponsor. Uh, but wait. It's a betting platform called Vi.gg. There has long been a concern in esports communities that betting and gambling sites shouldn't sponsor esports teams due to, well, you know, the con connotations with match fixing. Vi.gg will sponsor Dignitas's Rocket League, Super Smash Bros, and female CSGO teams, Lisa. Is this wrong? Should betting, betting and gambling websites and entities sponsor esports teams, or should we just make that a hard rule? No. I'm kind of torn. I can kind of see both sides on this one because, on one hand, I think you are a chronic gambler. I'm you not want a chronic all gambler. I've won a couple scratch cards a couple of times, <laughs> but I'm actually horrible at gambling. I'm the kind of person that doesn't know where to stop. So I guess maybe this is kind of good for me. Right. Uh, no, I think betting websites—they got the money, and I don't really see an issue them giving money to teams and supporting teams financially as long as they don't match fix. But that's kind of an assumption that you kind of have to assume that like these people aren't going to just do crimes in match fixing, that's right? That's the thing. Like, match fixing is such a simple thing that can take place between two people. If you've got a big sponsor yeah. of your team who's already given you and your players a lot of money and he just like walks up to you a few minutes before your match and shakes your hand and looks you in yes. the eye and says, you're not looking so hot tonight. <laughs> Like, that's all the communication that's... Look, that's so mean. Well, I don't I mean that to you right now. I mean, you look great. I just mean, like, if, you know, <laughs> if you're a player, you're a young kid, you're 20-something, and someone who has given you a whole lot of money is, hold, like, holding your hand and looking you in the eye yes. in an intimidating way and telling you without using words that are overt but sub yes. subtly telling you to throw the game, okay. what are you going to do? Yeah, but this, this is kind of like a side topic because this is about a betting website sponsoring a team, right? Ooh. Obviously, match fixing is very tempting for players, but for the organization to, like, sponsor a team, I think uh, they don't care who wins in a match as long as there is betting involved, right? Like, they just yeah, want people to I play. Mean, the people who are connected at the top are going to know which outcomes are going to produce the best results for their own organization, the betting website itself. Yeah. So they're going to have that influence. They're going to know that and be able to put that power to use. And it's on their shoulders not to do that. So it's, it is gray area here. I, I think that it really should be a hard rule that 
gambling websites shouldn't even be That's like in, in contact with your top stars and your players, at least within a few <sighs> days of a big event. I don't know. I kind of want to believe the fact that esports players and teams, they want to just win. And money is not going to tempt them to think otherwise. That's whatever. It, that's my that's, stance. Yeah, you got a yeah. very optimistic view. I, 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 hope I can so. appreciate that's, that. I just disagree fundamentally. That's fair. That's fair. But it's time to check in with streamers in Clip It. First up, this is how Katarina reacted when chat told her to cover her shoulders. God, dear God, I am very sorry for being so scandalous as to show my shoulders on the internet. I am very sorry. I showed... <laughs> I showed my shoulders before marriage, which is a sin. Ooh, are you guys gonna ban me right now? Oh, wow, no. you're just sitting hardcore over there. I know, I'm want. basically naked. What's going on here? This is actually, I love her take on that because yeah. she's obviously like satirically making fun of the fact that yeah. people are criticizing her for showing her shoulders. Hello? Yeah. What's so sexual? Okay, I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> What's so sexual about shoulders and feet and I guess all this other stuff? But the point is, you know what, I'm gonna keep it simple, I'm not gonna rant, but the point is a woman's body or anyone's body is up to them, how yep. they want to show it or handle it. No one should be able to tell you what to do. Imagine if I were to tell you guys, or you know, AJ, your wrists are very sexual and you shouldn't be showing it. Like, how do you feel about that? Actually, really weird, because I've always thought I had like dainty, dainty. wrists and exactly. I was always ashamed of them, so. <laughs> It really just boosted my confidence or, now. Thank you. <laughs> but the point is just like an arbitrary like body part, no, right? Like yeah. your elbows. You can't show your elbows. It's just we should not be telling people how to show their bodies. Especially like on, on Twitch. It's a weird thing when people show up in your Twitch chat and start making comments about you and you're like, you've hardly said hello to me at this point. You just like walk like imagine walking into a restaurant just going up to someone's table yeah. and saying, Hey, that shirt you're wearing kind of makes you look dumpy or yeah. like whatever comment. Yeah. It's like, I didn't ask for this. Yes, I'm on stream and you can come in and engage in conversation, but conversation is different than like dictation or yeah. commentary on how you present. But as I think a that's the danger of Twitch, right? Because when you're streaming and you're asking for donations or support, people all of a sudden feel entitled to tell you what to do. Fair. That's why I don't ask for donations or support. You can, but I, you're never going to hear me asking yeah, for it. Yeah, because then they all of a sudden feel like you owe them something. You want right. my money? Well, you're going to do this for me. Dance, monkey, oh, yeah. dance. I've had those like, weird things too, like do this and they'll donate something. I'm like, I, you don't have to. I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine. It's all about, you want to support your streamers and your content producers because you like their content, yeah. not because you want to tell them what to do. Okay, this well, is in the medieval age. Some people do want to tell them what well, to do. get out That's of here. Okay, I want to show my shoulders all I want. They look great. Next up, during an IRL stream, uh, Nim took an opportunity to imitate uh, Dr. Disrespect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it an actual bathroom? It's an actual bathroom. Yeah, Raul go, go, go. Gillette. No, go, 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 the best a man can get. No. Click, click, click. Raul. Oh, God, I just got banned. No, we're going to the garage. Shit. Well, it's been nice knowing you guys. Delete the VOD. <laughs> Delete the body. <laughs> so good. how long do we suspect these uh, Dr. Disrespect memes are gonna hang around? They're, they're fairly low-hanging fruit right now. You know where you can find a lot of low-hanging fruit? Where? The bathroom. Yeah. So the jokes will continue. I mean, I think it's deserved. First of all, he's a personality on Twitch. If you put yourself out the biggest. that way, you're gonna get memed and made yeah. fun of, and especially when you mess up like that. Well, he's already making fun of himself. I know he like tweeted out some uh, new emotes that may arrive on his no. channel when he gets back, and they are the emote of just like the doc's face appearing above the <gasps> bathroom door. Then how is this not so a confirmation like, that it's a conspiracy? He planned this. Well, it seems like he doesn't even care. Like he's just laughing about it himself, and like he didn't, isn't taking it as seriously as he should. Of course, he did post that apology video, but like. That's all it takes now to get over a scandal online is a, oh, I'm so sorry video and then yeah. you're back a few days later and like, still making Like how all the far money. does he have to take it before he gets, you know, like the people aren't behind him anymore. It's not funny anymore. He I literally went into a bathroom and was streaming in there. How is that okay? I don't know. I it's, mean, if there was someone maybe naked, he caught someone actually, then that probably would have been it. But I don't know. Streaming is so dangerous. Twitch IRL is so dangerous cuz we're not drawing lines anywhere. At least no. not at the moment. And I think we have to start in the, in the years lines. to come there will just be no more privacy when you're out in public I mean obviously we thought of that but no more privacy from recorded or, yeah. or having the potential for your image being broadcast to a grander audience you're just gonna have to expect the yeah. danger of that that's kind just, of what I expect when I go out I don't 
assume yeah. that I have any sense of privacy. Even with my phone. I like if the government's watching and looking at it, go ahead. Like I have I'm already expecting it. Yeah. So all the weird Just stuff that I post is for you guys. Avoid that I have in my phone. Showing your shoulders to the government. True. They don't appreciate it. True, true. All right, it's time of the day again where we scan through Twitter and bring you the very best tweets from all your favorite pros. Welcome to Profound Thoughts. Our first tweet is from Smashcaster Rodney Conyers with some wholesome fan mail. He shares this. I love getting fan mail. Heart face. The message says, bitch. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. I meant it in an endearing oh, way when I sent that text. As you know? if AJ right? sent no, that. He's the nicest guy. But I want to know, what was the least nice message you ever got? What's the I've, biggest hate mail? Um, you know, I've had like odd, just mean-spirited ones. Oh, so you got my, my messages. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't appreciate those, Lisa. But I have had some like weird ones in the past, like someone from... Someone requested my used pairs of shoes. Shoes? Yeah, like the first message was like a, just a general inquiry thing, and I replied kindly, and then like the next message was like, I noticed you wear black vans on the show frequently. When you're done with your black vans, could you <laughs> please mail me your black vans? And what do you think like, he's going to do with them, AJ? I don't want to imagine what he's going to do with them, but ultimately I did not send this individual my shoes. What about you, Lisa? I mean, Different I Different question for women entirely, well, huh? Well, we're talking about like hate mail. I'm not talking about the weird sexual things because, you know, those come up every once in a while. Right. But in terms of hate mail, hey, I've done interviews where people are literally like, this girl doesn't know what the hell she's talking about, or she's so dumb. Does she even know the game? Or right. the best one is like, literally after this interview, they effed. And I'm like, what? They yeah. just assume. I've seen that posted in a lot of things where it's women interviewing like esports stars or even sports stars, and it's like, yeah, what? it's got it's called chemistry. It's just you know when you're a person that socializes, you have good chemistry with people. Like, well, well the people who that? post those comments don't. No, know they don't that, get though. it. They don't yeah, get it. Wait, don't... you can talk to people like this. Yeah, they just assume that if they ever get face to face with someone of the opposite sex, that they There's will tension. have sex afterwards. What do you think we're gonna do after this show, guys? Go home and play games. Yeah, probably. probably. Our next tweet hails from <laughs> League of Legends X Pro Scara with some heartbreaking reality. The tweet says, I remember when I was younger, E3 and BlizzCon were my goals to go to one day in my life. Both feel like shallow versions of their earlier selves, and that makes me a very sad man. Oh, boo-hoo. I mean, I haven't been to BlizzCon yet myself, but okay. I just went to my eighth E3. And this one was a bit of a weird one with Xbox not being on the show right, floor right, and Sony PlayStation not being there as well. And it felt like there were way less opportunities to actually go and play games the one time that I had the time to actually go and play some games. Mind you, I was trying to do networking, meet people and stuff. <laughs> but even still, there were like no op moments where I was walking past something and thought like, oh, I can stop for a moment and, and play that game because there's a demo set up there. There was yeah. just way more lines, yes. way fewer opportunities there. This is there. the most entitled argument or discussion we're ever having here. Oh, the C3 out of all the eight ones is so bad compared just, to the other ones. You know, there's people who've never been to E3. You know, there's people who've never been to LA. You know, there's people who haven't even had a chance to do any of that. Here you guys are being all like, oh, sucked. It's only like a little bit worse than last year's. Get over yourself, Scara. AJ's are. Don't even mute me. <laughs> I'm fair in what I'm saying. You know what? Everything can't be great forever. Every E3 is not going to top the last E3. Deal That's with true. it. We It'll had probably, Keanu this year. Yeah, we what did have Keanu. We walked out on stage. That was a cool moment. Right? Yeah. All sure. right. <laughs> Let's end our day with some Pog champs because this next tweet is totally Pogs. I'm not sure what Courage and Ariana Grande has going on, but I wish someone would write a song for me too. This tweet says, Hey, Ariana Grande, I wrote this for you. No idea what Jordan Fisher is doing here. Good. That was so beautiful. That's a good bit. I like that, that one. <laughs> It was, it was beautiful, but it was, it was clever. It was clever. I love the emotion he had while he was pretending to play. And you were telling me this guy does have like big feels for Ariana Grande and actually got to meet her? What oh, happened? 100%. If you guys haven't followed the Courage, Ariana Grande, Nate Shaw drama, it's like this guy has been tweeting about her forever. And then because Scooter Braun actually sponsors Honor Thieves, they finally got the chance to meet only for Nate Shot to stand in between them for the photo. Ooh. So Nate Shot, not a bro. Mm. Not a bro. But it's really cute to see how Courage continuously is just fanboying over her. And I want to know, AJ, was there ever a pop star or someone that you fangirled or boyed 
over like that? Ooh. Uh, Who was I, your crush growing up? Everyone had one. Crush growing up? Yeah. I don't, you know what? Actually, I do remember oh my God. the movie uh, Wizards, so uh, like about Fred Savage and his like younger brother trying to go to like the Super Nintendo showdown in California. <laughs> and there was like a red hat girl. Everyone in the control room was like, Fred Savage, like what? yeah, remember he was he was in a movie about like Nintendo, and there's the moment where the kid shows off the like the power glove, and he's like, it's so badass. Chat knows what I'm talking about, and there was like a young redhead girl in that okay, movie. Okay, that's where we're going. Oh, it's called uh, Wizard. Sorry, I thought it was called Wizards. There was uh, an animated movie called Wizards that we also used to watch. That's another story. Animated. Never mind that. But Wizard with Fred Savage. <laughs> It's it's live action and the girl in that I guess I had a you crush on her. her I don't remember what her name was, but oh my that was God. that was my childhood I guess kid crush. I got many of them now, but let's ah. not go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> We're moving on. It's time to get to some crowd control. We want to kick it off with something a little scary. Have you ever wondered what Yoshi would sound like? Slow down. <laughs> I haven't, but uh, Sir Kickass sixty six did. <laughs> 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 ah, I did not expect Bring -ha. That's pretty good. Oh, yeah. You got the perfect amount of creepy in that one. Yeah, that was, that was a little bit actually, of nightmare fuel right there. <laughs> yeah, I like the picture actually better than the audio right. sound. Uh, yeah. That picture was definitely going to give me nightmares. I kind of want to see Nintendo develop a game featuring that Yoshi. No! Uh, I'm Yoshi. Uh. <laughs> Just so you can him like that. Uh, uh, Ooh, I can't do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Reddit user Vobra X takes Morpheus's question from the Matrix one step further. Oh, okay. After this, there yeah. is no turning back. You can take the blue or the red. Oh my God, AJ, which one would you pick, or did you pick? I guess because it's mm, yellow. Back. You. You can't choose an option. Play the, <laughs> and you play the game! I don't know, I'm, I'm looking forward to Sword and Shield instead. Oh I don't my. know what colored boxes they come in. Or Are you more of a shield person or a sword person? Probably sword. Same, I feel like I'm a very aggressive person as well. Yeah, yeah, I don't know I'd, who's I'd gonna pick shield. If you pick shield, you're a loser. Than, than defense <laughs> in that respect. Ew. But, uh, good meme right there. Our last post <laughs> comes to us from Dab88 on YouTube and features one of his amazing Just Cause 3 stunts. Have a look. Okay. Vroom, vroom. Nice car, though. Yeah. Um, Just driving through the mountainside. What do you I think? He's gonna games. It makes me jump angry. over something and explode? <gasps> nope. He's Wait. gonna climb out on the hood. Wait. Where is he going? Wait. It's a, it's a surfboard. <laughs> He is Star car part. surfing with a grapple. Um. And not just one or two. Okay. But Wait a second. Under three different. I'm starting to feel like this isn't faces. a very realistic game. <laughs> Just Cause 3? You're just learning that now. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, the car! But he lands it. He sticks the landing on the platform. Yeah. yeah. If only okay. you could do that in real life and avoid this Toronto traffic. Yo, now that's an idea. Okay, Toronto traffic's not that bad. Relax. Once again, people don't understand that we have it much better than other people. But okay. yeah, I agree. That's uh, that's an interesting yeah. move right there. That was a fantastic uh, highlight right there. Was it? I gotta go check out more. I was about to say Dab right? when you said his name. It was like Dab right, right, 66. Right. Okay, we had Dab right there. But that's it for Unmuted. Remember, you can always hit us up on all our socials at Squad State just to say hi or send us stuff to react to. We'll see you next time.